Today I'll speak on the power to reveal. Every time you experience something new, whether it be an object, environment, person, situation, thought, emotion, or physical sensation, life is revealing itself to you. At the same time, whenever you share your knowledge and experiences with others, you are exercising the power to reveal. This power supports mindfulness and heartfulness by enhancing awareness, a quality which also has a reciprocal relationship with playfulness. When our attention easily moves into new ground or broadens, more is revealed. And when our sense of reward transitions from a high degree of selectivity in the benefits we receive to a wide spectrum that includes everyone and everything, the power to reveal is behind it. As we explore the power to reveal more deeply, we enter the top portion of the crown mudra, the tetrahedron of experience. To remain for any length of time in this dimension, we must drop most of our mental, emotional, and spiritual baggage through the power to destroy. We also need to move beyond creative being, especially any supernormal powers that may eventually attach themselves to us, such as seeing into people's thoughts and feelings, knowing both past and future, manifesting money, fame, and power at will and without much effort, remote viewing, out-of-body travel, and so on. Because of the temptations they offer to the ego, they distract us from experiencing transcendence. Spiritual ego, the belief, I am a spiritual person while most others <laughs> are wallowing in ignorance, must also be scrubbed clean. On the spiritual path, spiritual ego is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Only after all this is in order can awareness, attention, and reward merge together and real freedom be experienced. So how do you know that you are hanging out in and not just visiting the revealed dimension or just getting caught up in your imagination that tells you your awareness is already in overdrive? <laughs> Firstly, your motivation to seek happiness disappears. Not due to some form of depressed morbidity, but to make space for the bliss that arises within you spontaneously and without specific stimuli. In this state, anything can elicit bliss from dull door latches, to abandoned cars, to people arguing, to wind blowing over water, to clouds, rainforest, and even a stray cat. That's because the self is experienced in all. There's no need to seek something that is with you all the time. Along with bliss comes greater inner peace. You are no longer ruffled by the ups and downs of life because all is seen as a play of pure consciousness. You are more open to love, have a loving, compassionate nature, which sees and honors all people equally. Virtues are no longer sought. They arise naturally, and you probably don't know they exist within you, because there is no longer any virtuous mask to put on or take off. In short, the virtues have fully revealed themselves. Maybe you can ask your friends, am I virtuous? <laughs> that should be a fun conversation. <laughs> When reveal is established, the veils of limitation, separation, and doership are lifted. Whereas the power to conceal relates more closely to imminence and reality as we normally understand it, the power to reveal is more associated with transcendence. In many religious and spiritual paths, there is the concept of God revealing himself through certain individuals who teach and or write scripture as ways to help others understand the nature of divinity. The power to reveal, once firmly established, shows you how your own divinity is expressed in everyone and in everything. Yet, this power is always within you, though you may not recognize it so readily. Every time you experience a connection with someone or something, even if it doesn't fulfill your desires or expectations, that initial sense of connection is divine because down deep, we all sense the self within. In fact, all desires, no matter how twisted, are founded in the longing to be one with the divine. All our attempts at connecting with others in the world are ultimately a form of revelation. Again, if you want to exercise the power to reveal, practice mindfulness, heartfulness, and playfulness. 
Additionally, you may ask the divinity within you to reveal itself. If you are sincere and persistent, you will be tested. Your divinity will almost surely challenge your false beliefs, limiting behavior, skewed perspectives on yourself and life, your capacity to experience the depths and heights of love, your values and your faith. It can be a rocky road sometimes, yet divinity will also lift you up, grant you wisdom, make you fearless, gradually showing its face to you. In short, it will ensure that you are always up to whatever challenge comes your way, though it may not always seem that way at first. If you don't want such an intense challenge, don't fret. You can always begin by becoming more aware of how the power to reveal is very much a part of your life, even in simple things like finding your car keys, listening to someone share their feelings with you, looking up at a beautiful sunset, as well as in the fulfillment you feel when you take that first spoonful of the chocolate ice cream you've been craving all week. <laughs> Before you know it, you'll become more aware of how much revelation is actually a part of your life. And the best way to honor this awareness is with gratitude. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.